Here we are in Lavertezzo. Many people come here in uh, summer enjoying this uh, beautiful uh, spot. You see the ancient bridge uh, Ponte dei Salti. And the river is uh, really nice here, very rocky. Could uh, seem to be a quiet place now, but uh, when a flash flood comes, uh, it, uh, it, it, it gets uh, really, really intense, the, the discharge. At the moment, there is a flow of 10 cubic meters per second. But when there are heavy rainfalls, it can be as much as 400 cubic meters. Downstream, we find the enormous dam of Vesaska, the biggest one in the Ticino region in the south of Switzerland, that became famous thanks to the James Bond film, Golden Eye. See reflection. The wall is uh, about uh, 220 meters high and uh, the dam is about uh, 380 meters long. At the top it is about uh, 7 meters uh, wide and at the base about 20 meters, so a huge amount of uh, concrete. Uh, it produces uh, uh, about uh, 100 uh, Five megawatt of installed capacity, which means more than 200 gigawatt of energy per year. Here in the Vesaska Valley, as in many European regions, it's important to have warning systems to alert the local population about flash floods. This information also helps to optimize the management of hydrological resources, more precisely, the production of energy. AT is a nitro producer in uh, based in Switzerland and uh, it's also a trader on the electricity market. It's active on uh, five markets, uh, Swiss markets, German, France, Italian and Austrian markets. In Prince, uh, uh, we saw it's a, it's a good tool that uh, put together different models and uh, give us in a quick way and in a very user-friendly way uh, the, the most important information uh, we need. To improve both risk and resource management, it is fundamental to develop our ability to forecast rainfall and improve meteorological models. And to ensure that these forecasts are useful, we must do it in a probabilistic way. So rainfall is a uh, highly uh, variable phenomenon in uh, space and in uh, time. And uh, that means that uh, deterministic forecasts are uh, of little uh, practical use. You have to include the spatial and temporal variability and the associated uncertainty into uh, the uh, meteorological uh, forecasts. And you do that through probabilities. And finally, you use those probabilistic forecasts as uh, entries into uh, hydrological models to produce a uh, probabilistic hydrological forecast. The European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts is based in Reading in the UK. This centre of the European Union is the world leader in providing probabilistic meteorological forecasts. It provides the best 10-day forecasts for the European continent available nowadays, with a probabilistic estimation of rainfall synoptic scale, that is, for regions measuring hundreds of square kilometres. When we want to mark out the areas where it might rain and improve the accuracy in terms of rainfall amounts, we need mesoscale models which can work with greater detail and resolution. One of these models is COSMO, which has been developed by a consortium of European institutions. The IMPRINTS project uses a version called COSMO LEPS, which provides probabilistic forecasts using ensembles of 10 members or scenarios. COSMO LEPS is calculated uh, every day. It covers most of the European territory and it has a great resolution of 7 km and 3 hourly time steps. I think this product is the optimal trade-off 
between having probabilistic forecasts for the territory that we, we are interested in and also a fine time space resolution which is necessary, it's really needed to forecast extreme rainstorms that can possibly lead to the occurrence of flash floods. Obviously, the higher the resolution, the better detail and precision we'll obtain. This is why we are working to improve the spatial and temporal resolution of the forecasts and to develop models able to better represent the meteorological processes, especially the convective ones. One example model is the version of COSMO that is used in Switzerland, with grid size of only two kilometers. Our job in imprints is to work on very short-term forecasting, that is now casting, now casting of heavy rainfall in the Alpine region. And this is exactly our area of expertise where we have been working for many, many years. And in the back to do so, we have an excellent radar network within which we have full access to the source code and to all the sorts of data to do the um, most amazing sort of research we can imagine. But the meteorological models need time to provide consistent forecasts. This usually takes about six hours after start time to give accurate predictions. To get forecasts for these first six hours, we can use other rainfall forecasting systems that work at shorter time ranges, usually based on data from meteorological radars. The radar is an instrument that emits electromagnetic waves whose frequency is selected to detect precipitation. The signal returns allow the radar to localize and estimate the rainfall amounts. By using the radar information, we can extrapolate the motion of the precipitation field and thus provide highly detailed rainfall forecasts for lead times up to about two hours. Within imprints, CRIE researchers are extending this idea to produce probabilistic forecasts. However, between the two hours that we can forecast from the radar data and the six hours that the model needs to be accurate, we still need to cover four hours. Matteo Swiss has filled this gap with the NORA system, now casting of orographic rainfall by means of analogues, which has been developed as part of the imprints project. The system works by comparing the current radar observations with archived historical images that have been catalogued using different parameters, for example wind velocity, and looking to find similar situations. The key of NORA is to exactly take benefit of the mountains because we get typical rainfall patterns that repeat and NORA goes exactly there and uses this sort of repeatability of the rainfall patterns given by the mountains to make better forecasts. The result at the moment is that we get uh, now casts up to say six or eight hours with a resolution of five minutes and one kilometer. By using the probabilistic integration, that is blending radar-based forecasts with the outputs of meteorological models, we are getting better rainfall forecasts in the range between two and six hours. This work is being carried out by researchers from the Catalan Meteorological Service and HIDS. the village of Glarus. Glarus is the main town in our area. The area is uh, 600 km square and in this area we have a lot of problems. Problems like uh, debris flows, debris floods, uh, flash floods, avalanches, rock falls. Uh, but I think the debris floods that are the biggest problem we have here because uh, all people are living near the rivers and when we have a thunderstorm and the, the water is, is coming, we have no time or only a little time to, to make a warning to the people. 
These images show the terrible destruction caused by the heavy rainfalls of 1944 in the canton of Glarus in central eastern Switzerland. Seeing these images, it becomes clear that once we are able to provide sufficiently accurate rainfall forecasts of where and how much it would rain, the next step is to understand what might be the possible effects of these intense rainfalls and warn about possible danger to people and property and infrastructures. These problems occur all over Europe. Flash floods and debris flows are very important floods that are covered by our risk management uh, procedures in France. So flash floods and debris flows happen in a lot of areas in France and we need to improve and develop new tools to improve the anticipation and the reaction of the people who are in charge of saving people uh, on our main watersheds. To achieve this aim, we are using two main tools. Firstly, using forecasting systems based on hydrological models that convert rainfall into runoff and river flows. The resulting flow prediction will vary depending on the extension, the intensity and the duration of the rainfall, on the landscape of the basin and the section of the river affected. The volume of water and the speed of the flow will determine if we are facing an emergency or simply a usual raise of the river. The IMPRINTS project is pioneering in the use of these probabilistic forecasting systems based on different rainfall scenarios to forecast different river responses to better decide whether we are facing a serious flooding event or not. On the other hand, we are working on developing early warning systems. To do this, we study the threshold values of the different variables that cause this type of torrential phenomena, using high-resolution models that are very complex. By using the results obtained in the laboratory and in fieldwork, we can establish laws and simplified methodologies which can be used to make dynamic risk maps. The development of these systems to generate early warning systems is one of the main objectives of IMPRINTS. Once heavy rainfall has been forecasted, and due to the characteristics of the affected area we know it is a flash flood prone area, we then need to decide if we are truly facing a risk event. If this is the case, we must produce a warning that will help the authorities to deal with the situation and to warn the emergency services and the affected population. Ten years ago, uh, a European system did not exist. So after the 2002 floods in the Elbe and in the Danube, the European Commission decided to start the development of a European flood alert system. To have the possibility to have a European overview of what is happening in Europe and to give complementary information to the national hydrological services. The European flood alert system has the aim to predict floods three to ten days in advance, I mean it's large river scale floods, whereas in print, is the aim to predict flash floods which develop within a much shorter time scale, a few hours, maximum 12 hours for example. And the aim of EFAS of imprints is to predict these short-term floods. This means a five times increase in resolution of the warnings currently produced by the European EFAS system. The first results of this high-resolution version of EFAS developed within imprints are very promising and have shown that we can already obtain flash flood forecasts with enough resolution and accuracy 24 hours ahead, enabling us to generate sufficiently detailed early warnings up to a day in advance. In small hydrological basins with quick responses, such as those located in the Mediterranean or in mountainous regions, IMPRINTS has also developed an early warning system based on the integration of the radar rainfall forecasts. Finally, in the case of debris flow, 
we need to develop a very specific early warning system. In imprints, the Universities of Salerno and the Polytechnic of Catalonia have developed a pioneering system that combines a series of geomorphological and topographic variables, as well as land use information, with the characteristics of the forecasted rainfall. In this way, they can produce a real-time dynamic map that shows the occurrence probabilities of these phenomena. At uh, Salerno University, we are working in the Imprints project and we developed a model that is going to provide some rainfall thresholds that can be uh, used for uh, warnings, to provide warnings when the rainfall is uh, very heavy. Once we have obtained these forecasts as to whether a specific area is at risk of flash flooding, it's vital that the information reaches the risk management centres in any European region in order to alert the emergency services and the population potentially affected. In um, 2007, the European Union launched a directive, so a legislation, to work on flood risk. This legislation is a major step forward uh, and it has three phases. By the end of this year, uh, the Member States are obliged to provide maps of potential flood risk. Then in two years' time, by the end of 2013, they have to provide to the Commission detailed flood risk maps. That means that every citizen in Europe can know if their house is under flood risk or if their holiday location is under flood risk. Then by 2015, all the member states have to present plans to the Commission, what they think they uh, are planning to do to prevent or to decrease flood risk in the future. Using all that we currently know about how to anticipate these phenomena, Imprint's main objective is to provide a platform of tools specifically designed to support the implementation of this directive and consequently to permit every region and municipality to deal with flood risk management in the most efficient possible way. A risk management that must be fully effective by 2015 in the entire European Union and that should be periodically revised every six years. A great challenge to avoid some of these images happening again.